Welcome back to Mind Pump TV, guys. I'm your host, Danny Matranga, and today we're gonna break down how to approach the bent over row. The bent over row is a pretty technical movement, but it's one of the things you have to be doing in the gym. That being said, there's a lot of common problems I've seen in my years training. I'm gonna break down how to best approach those so that you can perform the bent over row successfully. Let's dive into it. So in my years training in the gym, I've seen many movements butchered or performed improperly, but none of them more so than the barbell bent over row, which is quite a shame because it's a really important movement. And quite frankly, the problems people have with it are very easy to fix. The first thing a lot of trainees struggle with is properly hinging at the hips. And we've made several videos on how to hip hinge, so be sure to check those out. The second problem people run into a lot is inability to maintain a flat or neutral spine. There's a lot of bending and a lot of uh, like turning left or right. So the best way to address that is to simply build up the stabilization muscles, get comfortable with the pattern. And I'm gonna show you guys my two favorite movements that will help you do just that. We're gonna start with the one arm bent over row and then progress to the inverted row, both of those regressions should pave the way for you to be able to do a very good, well-performed bent over barbell row. So the first exercise I like is a one-arm dumbbell row. Now, most coaches I've seen teach it with a knee up on the bench. Um, you've probably seen this variation most commonly. I like to teach what I call it a three-point bent over row. It's kind of like a three-point stance for alignment in football where you set up with three points of contact here. And the reason I prefer it is because I get to practice one, hinging at the hips, right? I'm not in that offset position that a lot of people teach it. I'm in the hip hinge and I'm in that flat back position. And it's very similar to like where I would be for a bent over row. So from this position, I have a soft elbow to protect my shoulder, soft knees, but I'm feeling tension in the glutes and hamstrings. All I have to do from here is brace my core and simply row up. I like to drive my elbow up and back. Notice I have my left, elbow, my left arm uh, and left foot kind of synced up. I move that left foot back to make some space. If it's forward, it's gonna be problematic. So I have the right foot forward and the left foot back and offset, allowing me to have clearance for the dumbbell. Now, as you progress with this strength-wise, you may need to move the foot out a little bit more to make room for a larger dumbbell, but all things being equal, a slightly offset leg on the rowing arm should be the only real thing you need to do to maintain that nice three-point stance. And remember, braced core, hinge hips, flat back. All right, so the second movement I really like when building up to a properly performed barbell bent over row is a modified inverted row. Now, a lot of people would identify the inverted row as a progression of the bent over row, and they're largely correct. However, I've had good luck teaching my clients this regression of the uh, inverted row where you bend the knees. And what bending the knees does is it kind of cuts how much of the body you're actually having to pick up off the ground, makes it quite a bit easier. And then you get all those benefits out of the inverted row, like the increased grip strength, stabilization through the hips and spine, core control, all the things you need to have to do that barbell bent over row properly. So the setup is very, very simple. You get a barbell set up in a rack like so, leaning backwards with the back flat on the ground, hands upward in the exact same position they would be if you, in fact you were doing a barbell row, and then squeezing the glutes to start. Simply lift the chest all the way up toward the bar, making contact at either the lower portion of the pec, right at the bottom of the sternum, or the mid chest, anywhere in that region should be fine. Um, that'll give you the best opportunity to work the muscles you're gonna be working when you do that bent over row. One of the problems a lot of people have is they like to pull too low. This time when you do it, I want you to pull to that lower third of the chest, maintaining good control and tempo the entire time. All right, guys, so again, just to wrap everything up, the barbell bent over row can be pretty darn tough, especially because you have to have that hip hinge down and you gotta be able to stabilize your spine while you grip the bar. So in terms of form and technique with the bent over row, we've done several videos on that. Be sure to check those out if you're having a technique issue. But if it is a strength issue, remember, 
That three-point stance, one-arm row, gives you the opportunity to practice that hip hinge position as well as flat spine, flat back, if you will, um, tight core, all the things you want. And that inverted row regression I showed you is gonna be a great way to build grip strength, get comfortable on a barbell, and build up some power from that bottom position when the arms are fully extended. So I hope you guys found these regressions for the bent over row helpful. If you did, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and check out those videos on hinge and bent over row technique to make sure you're doing everything properly. Have a good one.